via telephone, Delegate Michael Hornby, owner of said radio and TV station. Good morning, Michael. Good morning, Bill. Good morning, John. Good morning, Rob. Good morning. Uh, Mike, I would like to go first on your good morning list. It's okay. I like the way it was, Mike. You, 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 you're doing well, Mike. Just keep on. That's right. But, but at I'm least showing you the respect yeah, you deserve. At least you included Rob. Most of the folks don't even include Rob. <laughs> hey, but before we start, I want to give a, a huge shout out to my daughter. She won Reserve Champion Junior Showmanship in the Lamb Division yesterday. She was extremely ecstatic. They called, and my wife was crying. She was crying. I was like. I told my wife, I said, why are you crying? You didn't do anything, but uh, they worked really oh, hard. Oh, so, yeah. your yeah. wife put in so many hours chasing animals around <laughs> your property. Did. Your daughter was yeah. an absolute delight on radio of the other day, Mike. She was, she's a, uh, a She was shy. I, I kept telling her, I said, who is this? This is not the daughter I know. <laughs> I've never met Shy Carly before. Yeah, exactly. I don't know who that was. Hey, uh, she, she was extremely excited, so. Congratulations, and let's talk uh, politics now. You're in Charleston. The governor has called a special session, which means you'll be there a little longer maybe than you had thought, but I know you anticipated he would call one. There were 44 items on the call, Mike, and I think 27 of them I read have already been passed. So actually, we, we in the House, we passed seven yesterday. Uh, we suspended rules on seven. The, 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 the one that I was pretty uh, excited about that I thought you'd like to know is House Bill 125 which will let our citizens pay their property tax, car tax, whatever it is now, and still be eligible to get that refund. So you don't have to do the whole wait for the half and, and all that crazy stuff. So um, that was the, 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 the most simple one that we passed uh, yesterday that made sense. Is that retroactive? So if you've already paid the entire yes. amount, you're good? Yes retroactive so in 2025 you can get your your uh, rebates do the folks who've already paid in advance need to do anything to make sure they're included in that or does the state have the master list they do not need to do anything we've cleaned up all the language and fixed all that so that was pretty uh um thing. I, th I think the big thing you know we were shocked one how fast it got called in i only made it to charleston about 30 minutes to uh before we went into caucus but um, the sheer number of bills and the, the things they're addressing is pretty impressive. This is un, unprecedented. So, also in the house, you, the governor is addressing the volunteer fire departments and the funding which they thought would come about by an increase on your insurance premium. Instead, he's going to propose twelve million dollars in one-time funding. Yes. So instead of raising taxes, he's just appropriating the money from the general revenue, um, which obviously for me is, is a lot more palatable than uh, raising taxes on our citizens when we're just given a, a major tax uh, decrease. Uh, and then there's a secondary bill that's going with that that actually addresses growth counties. So um, – it's kind of interesting. We're not using the word locality pay anymore. They changed it to critically needful areas or something like that. So um, it's a long word, but basically it's locality pay for some of the, uh, the, the growth counties in those correction areas. So that's a good start. Mike, uh, Mike, we haven't voted on it yet, but we will see. Mike, John Hardy's concern has been that if a county has, say, 12 or 15 uh, volunteer fire units and another county has two or three, that each each entity, each individual unit would be getting the same amount of money. Is that issue, Has that issue been addressed? So that's, that is being addressed with the secondary bill, but uh, this is a one-time fix for this year. So it'll actually just get the money to the volunteer firefighters about 18 months earlier. This is not a fix for next year. This is still something we are going to have to address in session in January. A.R. Emmert asks in regards to this uh, full year payment, if you've already paid for the half year, can you still pay the second half on personal you can property go ahead tax and pay the second half if you wish. Um, and you'll you will get credit um, for the first half still. No matter when you pay it. No matter when you pay it. Uh, Ar, I hope that answers your question. All right. What else on the call is something that you are enthused by and think will get passed? I I think a lot of it. Um, 
um, was very positive. I think the one item of contention um, that from just talking to other House members is the $45 million to Marshall University for their cyber. Um, uh, and, and that's tied in with some federal dollars there. So um, the, the, the question is, the jobs created at that university by that, are those jobs going to be in West Virginia? Are they all going to be shipped out to D.C. and things like that? So the feds are putting a lot of uh, equipment in that cyber um, training uh, locality. So that was one thing that I don't, that might be contentious. Mr. Gilstrap. Are you expecting any resistance on, on the bills that you have passed and that you expect to pass in the House? Are you expecting any resistance in the Senate or with the governor? No, I, I believe the Senate waived all rules and passed all 44 in one file, one sweep motion yesterday. So um, the House is, a, is, a, is attacking some, the Senate's attacking some, they're running the same bills. I don't see any resistance from the Senate at all um, based on what they did yesterday. I do see it being a little contentious in the House um, on some of these bills. Um, I know in the... Um, the there are a couple of bills relating to corrections where um, it's electronic tracking, IDs, things like that, letting people out um, without bond. Um, there are some contentious issues in there, but um, I think for the most part, um, we, we may get some stuff through. Mike, I'm not familiar really with this $45 million to Marshall. Is that for yeah. equipment? Is that for setting up training programs? Is that it's, a political giveaway by the governor, or what is it? So we went and toured in Huntington um, the facility, and, and they, they've got a state-of-the-art cyber um, training facility, for which – now the federal government is coming in and putting an actual replica of what's in D.C. down in Huntington so they can train these federal employees, which is great news for Marshall. But the question is, you know, where are these jobs going? Is it worth um, $45 million from, from, from the governor to do that? Um, that will be contentious, I think, um, and, and I, I'm eager to listen to finance today to find out what exactly it is. Does the $45 million then generate revenue people pay to, to go to this place, or is it just $45? Well, spent? yeah, it, it will generate a, a whole new program at uh, Marshall University to, to, to train you know, whole degrees, you know, things like that. So whether it um, whether it um, comes, you know, creates jobs in West Virginia? I'm not so sure. Is this something new for the involvement of the state, or is this something Marshall's been working on with the uh, with the federal government and the state is just now becoming a uh, a partner, or has this been a no? I, I, partner when for we quite visited a while? down there in interims, I, I think this has been in the plan in yeah. in the works for a while. I just think the uh, the, the final signing on the dotted line has just kind of happened. Uh, um, I, again, it's it's one of those things where you got to make a choice. Do you want to spend forty five million dollars on Marshall when they're, they're declining in um, enrollment, like everybody else, and struggling? But um, it's going to be a tough vote. I know that. On the non locality pay, locality pay, uh, yeah. Bill, what kind of numbers are we talking about in terms of of additional for the growth counties? So I believe the the. I believe the total number is about three million, just in the corrections. Um, I, from David Kelly was explaining, it could mean um, a CO one, a corrections offer of so one right now. It makes about thirty two. That salary could go all the way up to forty five. Oh wow! And and the CO two is even more, and the CO threes, and the CO threes is where we have our uh, our major issues because. Those guys want to stay there. They don't want to go into the administration and leadership. So they're going to be getting automatic raises too. So I'm, I'm, um, it is pretty significant. Okay. So. I, I'm, I'm confused, Mike. Uh, I thought you were talking about the locality, locality pay uh, pertaining to the uh, fire bill for growth counties. But I think what you're describing now is something it's, dealing with the corrections. Is that right? It's corrections. Okay. What about, but you mentioned earlier something for a part of the fire bill, part of the uh, supplement to the $12 million uh, that would be for growth counties. What does That's that? That's not for pay, though. Okay. Um, that was for equipment. That, 
That's for the uh, volunteer fire department. And again, we got these about 30 minutes, uh, all these bills about 30 minutes before we met. Um, I was really happy that uh, Speaker Henshaw said, you know, we're, we're not going to suspend rules and just push all these through. We're going to give you guys some time. So we went to first reading. Uh, we sent all of the bills to committee to get a full rendering of what exactly these are. So judiciary and finance are meeting this morning. We are reconvening at noon today um, to go over them in detail. That's given us some time to look at these bills in detail and get you some more information. Okay, so you'll report back on what this uh, uh, this additional money to uh, yes. supplement to the fire bill will be. And, and again, finance still has to go through every single you know little thing and make sure because what we got was brief um, outlines of, of what everything what, what every bill had. Mike, this is a one-time, one-year fix, I presume, because nobody wants to make any increases in fees or taxes during an election year coming up. So, but uh, what's the long-term fix here? So, I, I think um, now there is some base building in the um, in the corrections. Um, not a lot, but there is so, some base building in, in that corrections um, thing. There is. For the non-uniformed uh, correction officers, it's just a one-time payment. But for the uniformed correction officers, there is actual salary increases that are based on. And uh, how about with the volunteer fire department money as well? <clears throat> that is all one-time money, and um, it's based on the current rules. So, you know, it's one of those things we're going to have to address this um, in January. But it, but it has an effect where – if we were to pass something now based on, let's say, raising the taxes, they wouldn't get that money for another 18 months. With this appropriation from the governor, it's, um, you know, instantly. But, yeah, I understand the $12 million of that. But that that is going to be distributed the way that John Hardy has been nervous about, that every volunteer mm -hmm. fire department will get the same amount? Those are the details that we are trying to find out that was the contentious um yes. part of it is like we we'll hang on we want to we want details about how this exactly is working uh and that's what finance is working out this morning mike anything else our audience needs to know about no i just think uh you know i it, it's pretty positive I, I think there's some good stuff on here it seemed to me like it was a uh the governor saying hey this is my last hurrah i'm running for senate and uh i'm gonna appropriate a bunch of money um, that was the, the feeling out here, but um, there are some really good bills. I know uh, I've been working in education. This Game Changer bill is through education. I know it's a tiny uh, $1 million appropriation, but that, that I think that will make a huge difference in education in, in West Virginia, um, and, and that program will, will be fantastic. So I hope that one goes through. There are some really good bills in this, uh, in this 44 um, bill package if you will and is uh is this well attended is most of the legislature in charleston i think there was only about eight people missing um i know a uh, a delegate from jefferson county arrived about an hour late and came rushing in some guys came right off the farm so it was kind of uh we all knew it was kind of coming but the way it happened um when we were called at, i believe it was twelve thirty, saying hey you're in session at four um, that was kind of crazy. There was a lot of fast driving into Charleston yesterday. <laughs> and uh, our sports crew was in Charleston the week before for the uh, Legion tournament, and they stayed at uh, your house down there. How'd they leave the place? They left it pretty good from what I can see. It's not my house. It's Hyde's house. Right. I understand that. <laughs> and nobody slept in my bed, so thank you, Colin. <laughs> That's what they tell you. <laughs> yeah. As far as you know. And uh, it's hot and muggy down here. It's even worse than, than up there. Very nice. Hey, uh, what, I got a 9 o'clock slot open tomorrow, so let's get another update from you or whomever can handle it tomorrow. What do you think? Yeah, I can uh, I, I can call in at 9 tomorrow. Or I'll have Hyde call in. One of us will we'll, we'll figure that out. Um, but uh, I'll call you after session today to give you um, some more details so that you might want to get one of the leadership guys on. Excellent. Okay. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, sir. Thanks, Mike. Have a great day, guys.